this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a bathtub faucet handle. In case you're interested, here's the product information for my replacement parts. My bathtub already had a Delta system in it and I thought it would be easier if I replaced it with another Delta system. I really didn't want to get into the plumbing inside of the walls, I just wanted a quick cosmetic fix. Be sure to read through your instruction manual before you start working on any project. Here are the tools that I used. For this project, you need to shut off the water to your house. There's, there should be a lever next to a pipe. And just reach in, grab that lever, and pull it until it is perpendicular with the pipe. It's going to take a bit of effort to get that lever pulled down. Then you're going to want to open up some of your faucets around the house and just let the water run until it stops and then you'll be ready to go. Before you start working in your bathtub, make sure that you either close your drain or put something over top of it so nothing falls down there. In order to take off the handle, you're going to have to get access to the little screw that's underneath the cap. Here's a close-up of the bathtub handle, and I'm just sticking a pokey object into these two little notches so I can kind of pry that little cap off. It can be a little stubborn, so keep prying a little bit at a time until it pops off. Next, you need to untwist that screw so that you can get the handle off. It's a little easier if you hold the handle in place with one hand and twist the screwdriver with the other. Then just grab that handle and pull it right off. With the handle out of the way, now you should be able to access the screws that are holding the base plate onto the wall. Here's an up-close picture of where those two screws are located. If you have a different type of faucet than a Delta, say you have a Moen for example, your screws might be located in a different place. Grab the face plate and gently pull it off the wall. Now would be the time where you grab the casing and slide that off as well. But as you can see, mine was not budging. So I decided to try and twist it off instead of pull it off. Remember the old saying, righty tighty lefty loosey. If you want to tighten something up, you twist it to the right. And if you want to take something off, you generally you twist it to the left. Normally, there would be a large nut here called a bonnet, and it holds the cartridge in place so that it doesn't fall out of the valve. It's actually a really important piece. Mine is actually stuck inside of the casing at this point, and I couldn't get it out with just my bare hands. So I took this penetrating catalyst, I sprayed it inside of the casing to try and loosen up the bonnet. After waiting the recommended amount of time, I put the casing back on and tried to twist it back into place. So my intention here was that if I screwed the bonnet back on, hopefully now that the penetrator had the opportunity to loosen it up a little bit, I could pull the casing off and the bonnet would stay in place. So the last thing to do for this step is to remove the old gasket and to replace it with the new one from your kit. You want to put it over top of the bonnet, then pull it back forward so that it's really close to it. Now it's time to put on the new casing and the face plate. Mine was a bit of a tight fit, which I anticipated because I struggled getting the bonnet into place. You want to put the new faceplate on next. 
just kind of slides over the casing and you want to make sure that you line up the two holes in the faceplate with the screw holes that are inside the wall. I thought it was a little easier to see when I started screwing in the faceplate. If I left it popped off the wall a little bit, just so that I could see that the screw was actually getting um, into the anchor that it was supposed to get into. Another tip for you that might help, once I got the first screw into place, I immediately stopped and started working on the second screw. If you screw the first screw in all the way, you're not going to be able to see where the second screw is going and, and if it's actually anchored into the place that it's supposed to be. So I just worked one screw at a time, but I made sure they were both in the correct place before I really started screwing them in. Now it's time to put the handle back on. First thing you're going to need to do is remove the cap. I kind of just got my fingernails underneath of it and was able to pop it off. There's a screw in there that's gonna screw into the cartridge that's sticking out of the casing. You should notice when you get the handle in the correct position, it just kind of slides into place. Next, you need to screw in the handle. At this point, you should be essentially finished. You just need to put the cap back on and then turn on the water to your house and test out the system. But I wasn't quite so lucky. At this point, I found another problem that I needed to fix. It's kind of hard to see from this vantage point, but there's actually a gap between the casing and the handle. And when I moved the casing forward to try to fix it, I created another gap between the face plane and the casing. Once I took a look at the difference between the old casing and the new casing, it was pretty obvious that the older one was a bit longer than the new one, and the new one just wasn't long enough to cover the distance from the handle to the faceplate. So I needed to come up with a solution to that problem. So I took everything off in, in reverse order, I was expecting that since I was replacing a delta faucet with another delta faucet that the specs would match up and that everything would be alright, but I guess it was kind of ridiculous of me to make that assumption. <laughs> now I know. My first thought was to try and buy a replacement part just for the casing, but it's really hard to find just that particular piece in the finish that you want. So I tried to come up with something else. Since the old casing was exactly the length that I needed, I decided to use some spray paint that I had left over from a previous project and see if I could spray paint the old casing to make it match the new faceplate and handle. I used two coats of a spray paint that gave me an oil rubbed bronze finish and then I put on one coat of a sealer so that I could protect the paint job. Make sure that you wear a mask when you work with sprays. After the casing was all dry, I started installing the faucet again. I was really happy with how it turned out. Honestly, it was almost a perfect match between the product itself and my spray paint job. It looked pretty good. And that's it. All that's left to do is turn the water back on. Two things to keep in mind when you're doing this is that you want to make sure that you have an open faucet running somewhere in your house. And you also want to turn the water back on somewhat slowly. If you turn the water back on too fast, there is a potential that it could cause some damage to your pipes. So go slow. And try out your new bathtub faucet. <laughs>